So for this one, we're going to be running around and pray, checking out some of the environment art, talking about what's good and what's bad in this, perhaps looking for seams, errors, uh, whatever else we can find and talk about, basically. So I already played it for a little bit. We're checking out this little section here, and we're going to backtrack to where I just was. And we can see, first of all, this game was released in 2017. It's in CryEngine as well. And so it has dynamic lighting everywhere, which is really cool. Uh, screen space uh, ambient inclusion, but I don't think they were using screen space reflections necessarily. At least it doesn't seem like it. It looks like it's more like um, baked cube maps and whatnot. So uh, that is what that is anyways. The art style feels almost a little bit dated now. Like it's just, it's a lot of trim sheet action going on. Seamless textures perhaps. But the models are very simple in nature. And surprisingly, I don't think a lot of this was textured using Substance Painter. It doesn't seem like it anyways. I mean, it could have been. But a lot of this feels like they were still using Quixel Indu on it. So you got to figure it was released in 2017, but it was going on. The production for it was going on before that, obviously. And yeah, just a lot of this stuff feels like photo textures, maybe ran through um, Quixel Indu. So if you don't know what that is, that's what predated Quixel Mixer and Mega Scans and everything. It was a Photoshop plugin, more or less. And so you take your textures and work on them in Photoshop with the. Quixel. Yeah, Quixel plug in there. Fun fact about that, I actually bought that setup and then I ended up returning it. The manager at Quixel was really good about it, but I never seen creatures like I just didn't like it and do and all that Where very did much. Get Bottom of the ocean or something. All right, yeah, we're not here to talk to you, buddy. Sorry. But yeah, it's kinda of, it kind of feels a little bit more simplistic in a way. But at the same time, I really like it. It's, it's just this kind of feel to the environment. It's real gritty and photo textures it could maybe be a little bit higher quality and resolution and whatnot. But overall, it still feels really nice. You see, like the light source is back here, but it still casts through the wall a little bit. And it's still a common thing that happens in most engines, but. This is also made by Bethesda, if you didn't know that. So that's kind of interesting as well. They have, of course, they had like a DLC for it, I think. But the DLC, I think, was made in Unreal Engine. And then their main game was made in Crying. It was one of those weird games, those weird titles that did something like that. So, but yeah, this is what you would call a gallery. Like, you can't interact with this area. But you can see stuff in here and builds up the story perhaps right so this alien is trying to maybe like create a dimensional portal or whatever where the worlds combine or whatever you got like this nice little sputnik looking satellite in the mix of it it's a lot of fun stuff to just look at all over the place now most of this is pretty spot on it's got some real good sci-fi elements to it the only thing I really don't like about the art style or art direction for this whole game is they try to mix in like an 80s style aesthetic to everything, but also kind of like the, um, I'm trying to think of the name here, like the same kind of feeling of like Bioshock or something like that. The, um, I won't even think of it right now, but not, not steampunk. We're talking about, um, Talking about, I had to pause the video and go look this one on, look it up. Art Deco, that's the one. We have like the trims on everything. It's kind of like gold trim and a little bit of more like a brutalistic mix with, um, I did like a whole study on this stuff. I can't even remember it, but yeah. So this game also happens to have a lot of throwbacks to System Shock of all things, right? So you can see these are kind of like the Gravitrons from System Shock, which is kind of fun. This also references to like Looking Glass Studios and whatnot. Okay. That didn't work technically because of that robot. They have a breach of sanitation or something going on. Yeah, 
Yeah, more of an art deco, not necessarily steampunk, right? But you can see where it drew a little bit of inspiration. I blame Bioshock for sure. Everybody got hung up on Bioshock um, for years and years, right? I'm all steampunked out now because of Bioshock, but you already know what we're going to do later on the channel. We're going to check out all of Bioshock. <laughs> Why not? So if you're trying to become an environment artist, don't recreate like a whole environment, like a whole map like this, right? Or a whole level. Just do one part of it. Do like this room, right? There's tons of stuff in here to make and keep you busy for a little while. But you could probably get this done if you're somewhat familiar with 3D modeling at least. You could probably get this done in a week or two weeks maybe. If you really push it, you know? Off and on, you know, a month or plus, whatever. If you're going to end up taking an art test for any studio, there's a good odd chance you're going to be asked to do some kind of corridor, a room, a courtyard, something. Something that's kind of more of like an arena, you know? Or just a smaller section of an environment, not the whole environment. And that art test is going to be either a week or two weeks long. And you will have to make it happen, basically, and do it as best as you can in that time frame. You know, just imagine yourself being tasked. You're at a studio, and they're like, we need you to take this concept image and build this thing, right? Well, that's what you're going to end up doing, basically, right? You're going to build what whatever's in that concept art. So a lot of times, it's really good to work off of concept art, obviously. A lot of guys do that on YouTube. And that little things like that, man, in games, they always, you know, you're just randomly walking down a hallway and it just kills you, right? That happens way too much to myself, anyways. It's always like environmental hazards that you aren't ready for. Or you're not thinking about when they, they, they do do that. So, like, we're sitting here checking out props and environment stuff, right? And this one, I always like this one. This one's cool. It's just like a construction light slash spotlight, right? With like a little bit of, it looks like legs so that it could walk around almost. So that's a fun little light to me. And yeah, there's seams all over these things. A lot of these are still using trim sheets. They're not even necessarily using unique textures in a lot of cases. Which is just wild when you think about it. Maybe a lot of them have been atlas together as well. And then uh, certain places they got obviously decals. I don't know if that's a decal or not. It should be. But this, this game doesn't utilize decals real heavy, as I've noticed as I've walked through it. At least it doesn't seem like it does. There's a few projected decals I've spotted, but not like a ton and ton mesh decals everywhere, anyways. You see, that's like a trim all the way down, right? It'll probably be seamless all the way down with no breakup in it. For the most part. Can't can't zoom with that one very well, I guess. But it's just little tiny details, right? It's all of these individual pieces that start to add together to make something really special. If you removed like everything but just the staircase, it would still look pretty cool, but it just wouldn't it wouldn't be as cool, right? Because it's actually kind of simple in nature. It's a little modular staircase. The walls are also modular. And the way the, wa the walls are modular, they're kind of built in two-step, where there's like a base plane modular piece, possibly. And then it has another mesh that's separate in front of it. So it's like you're stacking two modular pieces together. So a lot of that's occurring in this game. So you can see like the ceiling. You have like the background modular piece, but then we have these modular pipes in the way. So it's almost the same idea. It's like modular pieces on modular pieces. So you can see like the big ceiling tile, very simple, but then you have this whole frame structure below it, which is definitely done with the trim sheet, right? And you got some additional piping that is all sitting in front of it, so it just feels a little bit more authentic. Lights went out or something, I don't know what happened there. 
And it brings us out to the main lobby. You see the sun is actually moving, so it's all dynamic lighting. Shadows are creeping. My shadow's creeping. Overall, the, the art style, like the 80s style, it's like probably the mix with the, um, the trim, the gold trim everywhere, it just doesn't really do anything for me. Because we got like a little bit of, I think crossing of time frames is what's happening a little bit. It just doesn't feel that great in that sense. But it's interesting. It's an interesting mix that I don't think I would have personally went with. Then it has a lot of like, I'm just, I look at something like that. I'm just thinking like Pink Floyd or, you know, something else. All the arts, different kind of 80s art styles. And, um, you know, it's like when you get near the electronic pieces, which we didn't have much of in here. I don't think. Yeah, some of the electronic stuff. Like it's definitely 80s. It feels like, you know, if you were to walk around a corner, you'd run into a guy wearing blue jeans with a flannel and he's like listening to Blue Oysters Cult or something, you know? So, overall, though, it's pretty fantastic. Also, if you're a complete beginner in Blender and you're just trying to get your head wrapped around to some of this stuff, just model something simple like this, you know? Start with like a simple little cool prop and learn on these things. Like it's gonna be like one texture, one model, high poly, low poly possibly, right? And then make the case later, you know, do it as a separate piece. Use trim sheets for the case. Or use a trim mixed with baked pieces as well. You know, you can model these all individually and then try to bake them all down to an atlas texture later on, perhaps. You know, you can combine this whole piece together, potentially part trim, part um, baking the trim, it, and would actually be kind of challenging. But you, know, you could definitely do like the detailed elements and an atlas. An atlas, of course, would just be in lots of different UV islands from different props, perhaps baked into one texture. Or one UV map, anyways. You can create them separate with their own UV maps and create second UV channels. Bake everything to those second ones. That's going to... I'm going to do a video on it at some point. I've talked about it a little bit in videos, but... That's what you're going to more than likely do. A lot of times for... Um, or maybe not necessarily baking in atlases, but... Doing like high poly to low poly bakes, but doing like next gen assets baked back to a low poly model. For... Um, just various engines and whatnot. Welcome. Maybe I can help you. That'll be a thing that's going to happen quite a bit. There's a few studios already doing that, so... Something worth talking about, I think. Just mentioning. I don't know. Maybe that one's high to low. Um, substance? I don't know. I couldn't tell you much about the internal development of this. Like, I've never seen a video talking about how they came up with the art and technique series and our workflows and whatnot. Nice to see you. Some games are real open about things. Like Cyberpunk was pretty open about how they went about doing a lot of their artwork, but I don't think I've ever seen anything on this one necessarily. The only thing I know is that it's in CryEngine, and I know what CryEngine does and does not like a little bit, and so. It's an interesting uh, game engine for sure. And I don't recall it ever being super decal heavy for things. I mean, it can use decals, but it, obviously, you know, what's on the floor right here, right? But then again, maybe they did use decals more than I'm realizing because there's always ways of using them for just like random like uh, edge details and things like that as well. Anyways, it's a lot of fun just to kind of run around and check things out.
admire the artwork a little bit. You know, somebody worked on this at one point, put a lot of time, energy, and effort to all these different things. And uh, I might take a quiz right now. What is going on here? What am I clicking on? Why? It could be like a jump scare or something. Please wait. Load in. Easter egg? That I've never found before? Is in here? I done froze a computer while on my computer. Hello. Nice to see you. Did you just fly through the window? What is wrong with you? <laughs> All right. I guess we're going to end the video here, guys. I hope you enjoyed checking out the Prey environment art, I guess. And, um, yeah. Oh, also, so just for the record, if you get, you know, you download the Epic Games launcher, so you get Unreal Engine games off of Epic and whatnot, right? Welcome. They give away free games like every month. And so this game I got free. I got all of the Tomb Raiders for free. And you just have to pay attention to like what they're putting out for free. Sometimes it's great stuff. Sometimes it's okay. Um, but yeah, you can always find like free titles and play games for free basically. Occasionally at least. Just watch it. And uh, if you want, you can join the Discord whenever I see something new pop up that I think is interesting that that other people would enjoy at least. I'll post it in the uh, in the Discord quite a bit. When these new games and new titles come out anyways. Not that it really should be a surprise to anybody because the launcher itself likes to, you know, do notifications, but just in case you miss it, I still post it, right? This is just happens to be one of those games, so. Hey, you son of a gun. My gun has no bullets. That's one of the reoccurring things in this game. You just never have bullets. There's just always... Your gun's always empty, it feels like, anyways. I don't think I'll ever get bored with space games like this. Just hanging out in a space station or a planet. It just seems fun. To always just walk around in these environments. Yeah, so anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I will check you out in the next one. Alright, take care.